In this video, we're going to work out more examples where we represent functions as power series. So in this example, we're going to find a power series representation. Somehow my P got eaten there. Let's go ahead then. And Put that back in there. All right, a power series representation of the function f of x equals natural log of x squared plus four. And then we're gonna use the first four terms of that series to find an approximation for the natural log of 104. So we first need to do some calculus and some algebra to find a power series representation. If I just take the derivative of natural log of x squared plus 4, I'll have 1 over x squared plus 4 times 2x. Uh, that's from the chain rule. And so that would mean that the natural log of x squared plus 4 can be considered as the antiderivative of 2x over x squared plus 4 plus some constant of integration. Now, I can break out the 2x as a separate factor because I'm going to try to find something that looks like 1 over 1 minus u. So by breaking out the 2x and then thinking of x squared plus 4 as 4 plus x squared, which would be the same as 4 minus a negative x squared, so next thing will be to factor out the 4 and close my bracket. So the 4 will divide into the 2 and I'll be left with 1 half x over 1 minus the negative of the fraction x over 2 all squared. So I should be able to write down a power series representation of the second factor here, the 1 over 1 minus negative the fraction x over 2 squared. And I could, again, write the negative sign to the power of n as negative 1 to the power of n. And then I'd have x over 2 raised to the power of 2n. And then I can see that out in front here, I really have another factor of x over 2. So and since the top and the bottom has the same base as the power inside the summation, I'm going to go ahead and multiply that in. That'll just give me a power of 2n plus 1. So I have this alternating series. That doesn't represent the function we're looking for. Uh, but it does represent its derivative. And so now I can just find the antiderivative. Oh, of course, I need to make note that my limitation or my radius of convergence is that the absolute value of x over 2 has to be less than 1. So fine, let's go ahead and integrate that term by term. I will just use the power rule. I will add 1 to the exponent to get 2n plus 2, and then divide by 2n plus 2. Um, I guess I should be careful. In here, I, I had to use a u substitution. Let's just look at the uh, details of that. Let me go back. So I would be using the power rule on u, which is x over 2, so du would be 1 half dx, and so dx would be 2 du. So now when I take the antiderivative, I'll have u raised to the power of 2n plus 2 divided by 2n plus 2, but then I have this extra factor of 2 from my u substitution. 
And so that's where that two came from. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this uh, two over two n plus two. There's a common factor of two. And so we'll write that as x over two raised to the two n plus two all over n plus one. And of course, there is that value of c. And in this case, this is an example where that constant of integration is not zero. Because if I put in zero uh, for x, uh, then the, I put zero in for x on the right-hand side as well, I'll be left with the natural log of 4 equals the summation of a bunch of zeros plus c. And that tells me that c has to be natural log of 4. So my power series representation, I'm going to put the natural log of 4 in front of the summation so it's clear that it's not part of the summation. So the natural log of x squared plus 4 will be the natural log of 4 plus the summation n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n of x over 2 raised to the power of 2n plus 2 over n plus 1. And that's going to be valid when the absolute value of x is less than 2. And that came from the fact that the absolute value of x over 2 has to be less than 1. So now let's move on to the second part. We're going to use four terms to find an approximation for the natural log of 1 over 4. So here's my power series representation. And I could be tempted, so tempted, to say, well, 1 over 4, uh, that's just going to be f of 10. All right, this is just going to equal f of 10 is 10 squared plus 4, which is the natural log of 1 over 4. But I have a problem, right? And it's a quite clear problem, is the fact that our power series representation is only valid in its interval of convergence when x is between negative 2 and positive 2. 10 is not in that interval. 10 is not in the interval of convergence. So does that mean that this question is impossible to answer? Is there a mistake somewhere? Is there a typo? No, algebra will come to our rescue. It just means we have to do some more work. And so what we're going to do is break up 104 as 20 times 5.2. You say, well, why did you choose that? We'll see. Hold on. So that's the natural log of 20 plus the natural log of 5.2. Now 5.2 I can write as natural log of 1.2 plus 4. Aha! So that is going to get us a x value which is in the interval of convergence. But what about the natural log of 20? Well, let's write that as 4 times 5. 20 equals 4 times 5. So I'd have the natural log of 4 plus the natural log of 5. And then I'll write 1.2 as radical 1.2 squared. And the reason why I do that is because my function says natural log of x squared plus 4. So in this case, x would be radical 1.2. And 4 is the same as 0 plus 4. 5 is the same as 1 plus 4. And so now I can write the natural log of 104 as three function values, f of 0 plus f of 1 and f of radical 1.2. And all of those values, all of those x values, 0, 1, and radical 1.2 belong to the interval of convergence. So I can use those approximations to approximate the natural log of 104. All right, so let me, after I simplify, 
I actually get these are my first four terms. They're even powers of x, which is nice because if I, you know, we're in a situation where I didn't have technology that could reliably calculate the radical of 1.2, I don't need radical 1.2. Radical 1.2 squared would be just 1.2. Radical 1.2 to the power of 4 would be 1.2 squared and radical 1.2 raised to the power of 6 would be 1.2 cubed. So f of 0 is the natural log of 4, and there's uh, no further simplification possible. Uh, so bringing out my calculator, I get this decimal approximation. f of 1 is this expression. And again, using my calculator, I can get a decimal approximation. And then f of radical 1.2, you can see there's no radical in the approximation here. Uh, I still need my calculator to help me get a decimal approximation. So if I add those three together, I'll get an approximation for f of 104. And um, that is my approximation right there. It's only about valid to about two uh, decimal places, but still, it's only an approximation anyway. In this example, we're asked to evaluate or find an antiderivative, evaluate an indefinite integral as a power series. So it would probably be very challenging to uh, find the antiderivative of this integrand as an expression of elementary functions, so in a closed form solution. Uh, but it should be fairly straightforward to represent it as a power series. And again, the limitation that the power series has is that we are going to be restricted for the x values between negative 1 and positive 1. So the way that we're going to look at this is that... Um, natural log of 1 minus x itself can be viewed as the antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus x. Now, in general, I need the absolute value signs, but if I restrict myself to values of x between negative 1 and 1, then 1 minus x is always positive, so I can remove the absolute value signs. And I know a power series representation of 1 over 1 minus x. And I can integrate that term by term, just using the power rule. And now I have a power series representation of natural log of 1 minus x. But I'm left with finding this constant c. And I'll go back to my uh, same process. I'll put 0 in for x on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Um, all of my power series examples are centered at 0. If my power series had x minus a to the power of n plus 1, I would use x equals a. You always want to use the center of the power series. But here my center is at 0, so I'll put in 0 in for x on the left-hand side, 0 in for x on the right-hand side, and I see that c is going to equal 0. But I don't want a power series representation of natural log of 1 minus x. I want the natural log of 1 minus x and have that natural log divided by x. So that's not a problem. I can just multiply my power series representation by 1 over x. Right? And I really should say that now that I've multiplied in by uh, 1 over x, um, 
I, I'll know, well, when I write down my original integral, I know that x really should not ever be zero here. I can't perform this operation if x is zero. So I should really say that the absolute value of x has to be less than one and x cannot equal zero. But now that I have a power series representation of this integrand, I can go ahead and integrate that power series term by term. So I'll add one to the exponent, I'll get n plus one, and I'll divide by another n plus one. And so that's going to make my uh, denominator parentheses n plus one all squared, plus some constant of integration. In our last example, we're going to look at a couple of power series. So we're kind of going in the opposite direction. Here we're given a power series, and we'd like to say, what function of x does this power series represent? Well, we've actually answered this question in the previous video, because if we think about the power rule, the derivative of x to the power of n is n times x to the power of n minus 1, which is exactly what our terms of this series are. So our original series, each term is the derivative of x to the power of n. And so that means I've taken the derivative of the series, the summation n equals 0 to infinity x to the power of n. And why do I start at n equals 0? Because remember that when I take the derivative of the entire power series term by term, the original constant term vanishes because the derivative of constant is 0. So here, originally I was starting with n equals 1. Now I start with n equals 0, which is what I want to do because Starting from 0 to infinity, that is the power series then of 1 over 1 minus x. And the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x we saw was 1 over parentheses 1 minus x squared. So in our power series for part b, it looks very similar to the power series in part a. The only difference is that I have x to the power of n rather than x raised to the power of n minus 1. Well, I can leverage uh, part a if I were to just take the terms in part a and multiply it times uh, x, I would get the terms for part b. So what I can do is take the function that I got from part a, well, and multiply that by x, and that'll be the function that this power series represents in part b. So I hope you found uh, this video useful. It does take some practice. It does take some getting used to working with these power series. And I think that if you work out these examples on your own, that will help you when you start working out examples from the homework.